All right, so CC202, set and maps topic here. So today's structure class, we gotta talk about what's the difference between sets and maps, right? Look at hash set, use link at hash set, look at tree set, and look at the performance between sets and lists. And you'll be able to tell the difference between collection and map and describe when to use hash map, linked hash map, and tree map to store the values. So we can see there's going to be keys involved when you talk about map. Obtain singleton sets. So what's singleton? You guys heard about singleton? Single? So let's think about we can always create multiple objects, right? From the class. Some design we only want one object. So that is called singleton to make sure that you don't have duplicates. Otherwise, it's kind of confusing in the system. So the system decides to have just one instance created. So that's singleton. So this one is say to obtain singleton sets, lists, and maps. Pretty much like you want to have one list, something like that, right? How to create a singleton list. You then in one application we talk about same list. And unmodifiable set list and map using the statics method in the collection class. I think this is very good one. So first let's look at the definition a set. So what's a set? A set is an efficient data structure for storing and processing non-duplicate elements. So when we talk about set, it's non-duplicate elements, right? Pretty much the same thing we use is to store data, right? And process it with add, contains, right? Remove. A map is like a dictionary, right? A map just like you look at a key using a key like I want to look up what's a cat and then we get a value an animal with a fur right so that's pretty much a map no fly list is a list created and minted by the US government like we're gonna have the list of no flying, right? So we can use the list to list the territorist, ter terror terrorist, I mean, screening center of people who are not permitted to board on a commercial aircraft for travel in or out. So this is a list, an example of list, right? Suppose we need to write a program that checks whether a person is on the no-fly list. You can use a list to store names in the no-fly list. However, a more efficient data structure for this application is a set. Like list can be duplicate, right? But set is non-duplicate. Now you also want to say, I want to store information about the terrorist information. So by mapping, we can use a map now, right? To get the name of the terrorist name, and then we can get the details like gender, height, wage, and nationality, right? So the key is the name, and then we get the values out. So we use a map. And map is an efficient data structure for such 
like text like this. So set and maps is already introduced in the Java collection framework. You can use hash set, link at hash set or tree set. There's a set that is in the Java collection. So let's look at Java collection, right? So this is a set, like we mentioned, hash set, link at hash set, and tree set. It's under collection interface. So these are an interfaces, right? Collection and set are the interfaces. And we have sorted set and interface, which tree set ex just implements those interfaces. So these are classes. So again, set contains no duplicate elements. The concrete classes. So what are concrete classes? The classes that I just show you, hash set, link at hash set, or tree set, that implements this set interface, right? So it has to ensure that no duplicate elements can be added to the set. So whenever you create a new element to add into your set, you have to check you're not allowed to duplicate. Just like user name for your project, right? So how would you know that it's going to be no duplicate? So that's why last class we tried to look at, you have to implement what? Equals method in your object, right? User. So the dot equals will tell you if it's true or false, right? We were talking about create an object and compare use contains, right? Last time. And contains will call equals. So there are three concrete classes of set, hash set. So let's look at hash set. So hash set implements set interface. So it said you can create an empty hash set using its no arc constructor, like the default constructor, or create a hash set from an existing collection. So by default, the initial capacity is 16, and the load factor is 75%. If you know the size of your set, you can specify the initial capacity. So that means, by default, mean if you use the default constructor, it's going to create the size of the set at 16, just like an array with an element of 16 size, right? So the load factor measures how full the set is allowed to be before its capacity is increased. So it said load factor is 75%, meaning like I said, like when you use array list, it's always dynamically increased itself, right? When you use array, the size is limit. Now, when you use set, or you create a list or set that gonna be dynamically increase the size. This why we check that when it reach seventy five percent capacity, it's going to increase the size. So that's a lot factor. Like when it reach at, like in this case, sixteen seventy five five percent is twelve, right? So when it reach twelve, it's going to enlarge the size to 32. Okay, it's just double the size every time. 
wait, reach 12, it's just increased. Creating, if you use an array to implement, Pemba is create a new array with a size 32, and then copy the old contents to the new array, and then remove the old array, which is smaller size. Okay, so a hash set can be used to store duplicate free elements. For efficiency objects added to a hash set need to implement the hash code. All right, so we talk about hash. So what's hash then, right? So hash is a technique that you use to retrieve the information out. So you use the hash code to retrieve the information out. So this is just showing the UML diagram of the collections interface, right? And then set interface. And then we have hash set who extends from abstract set. This is an abstract class generates who implements the set interface. And hash set itself has constructor this is the default constructor. This is a constructor that can take another collection to create its own set from another collection. Could be a array list. Hash set, you can also create, initialize your own size if you know the size. You can also change the load factor from 75% to 50 or 90%. Linked hash set. So technically, linked pretty much uses the technique of linked list. Right, and hash set itself is just using array to implement. So we can use array hash set, just like we do stack and I have linked list stack, I call it out stack, right? So this is linked hash set. Use the technique of linked list to create hash set. And also on the right hand we see we we have another interface called sorted set. So this one looks like this set is unsorted. This one will be sorted. So we gonna have to add the method like first, last, head set, and tail set. So when we talk about head and tail, that means it's part of the beginning and tail part of the end of the set. And also we have another interface named navigable set. Right. You can look at you can go to the pole first, pole last, lower higher, lower from the element that you provide, higher than the element that you provide, floor, get to the bottom, ceiling, get to the top. And tree set pretty much just implements these interfaces. Let's look at an example. So we create a hash set and set is an interface, right? So what do you call this technique? Polymorphism, right? Like, since hash set is a set, then we can make a set as a type and then create the hash set. So this is called polymorphism, right? through the interface. Now you can start to add the string to the set because of hash set has the method add. Add is part of the collection, right? Add, remove. So. Would you, would you get a runtime error or a compiler error if you tried to enter two of the same? If you were to add 
Oh, so you talk about the duplicate, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, right? So let's try that. You guys are supposed to implement to check, and this is from your collection already. So the that means it's already implemented from the library, so it should check for that. And it's just throw exception at the compiler, compile town. So Test hatch set. All right, so we going to test to get a set right from the collection public static void main. And we instantiate the set. We import the set. We import the hash set. Now we gonna call add. We gonna add Jack. We gonna add Jack again. So the question is, in this case, let's see. We're going to do system dot out dot print set to see what is in the set. only one jack so you don't get any errors looks like but it will not make it a duplicate it's only add only one item Oh, now it depends on your equals, right? That you implement on your user. Are you, when you compare, are you looking at the username? If you're looking at username, it's going to start just one object. Because the first one is the valid one. It depends on the criteria how you define the equals or the duplicate, right? On your equal method for the user. No. Oh, you mean the hash code? Yeah. No, hash code is different. Okay. Hash code, like now, I'm not the one who implemented this, but we can look at what's the technique that they use okay. to create a hash function. And hash function pretty much has a hash code, just like a key to. The technique of hashing is faster than like when you look up, you s instead of you spend like n to activate to each item on the list, you can just look at. I'm looking at employee number. Like one hundred, now one hundred. But we have five digit employee number, so they're gonna have several set of one hundred. I mean, one set of 100 that have several employees in that set, right? But we're going to use a technique like most recent. We're going to say, okay, the guys who look up last time, most likely we're going to see it again, something like that. It depends. There's so many techniques. Or just do randomly pick employee from that 100 sets. So those are the key. But it has to be, I'm not sure what they're using collection here. But you can look up. It's absolutely different question, right? Okay. We're gonna talk about hash more.
later on. And hashing technique. But by filter out like that, it's faster than you iterate to the whole employee list with five digits employee number. You just iterate just the set of 100 instead. Reduce the time. So that's called hashing technique. Like now, it's pretty much using hashing technique to see the duplicate. By using, yeah, probably it could use the key, like you said, but I'm not sure if they, right? Mm -hmm. By looking at a set of Jack mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Like now, it's try to add a New York again, right? Like we can see, it's only have New York one time, right? Because a set does not allow the duplicate. And you see that the set itself, when we print out, is not ordered because this is not an order, right? Like Beijing is, should be first, but it's not, right? Because this is the hash set, right? So now, these are pretty much just the method, right, that we've seen in the collection that being used here. We can look at some of this. So after we add, we look at contains, like last time I tried to show you. This should return, if you don't have type A, it should return as what? Fault, because we don't have type A, right? And then we gonna add all. Like add all, pretty much add is add one element at a time. Add all, you can add another collections into the set. You can combine two sets like that. You can remove all, retain all. So let's look at when we add all, it's just combine set one with set two, right? So you have San Francisco, New York, Paris, Beijing, and London. But since duplicate, so it's not going to retain the duplicate values. And when you remove, it's just remove London now. Now, retain all meaning what? Removing common elements. So you can remove things that the same from both sets. So that's why it's empty after that. So it looks like the method offset can be very beneficial, right, for retain all. If you want to remove like two lists remove the duplicates or find the duplicates, right? Now linked hash set pretty much use linked list so it should be the same but use linked list. So the linked hash set, so the linked hash set maintains the order in which the elements are inserted. It's not sorted, but it maintains the order that you yeah, inserted. Now let's talk about tree set. So we know that uh, the difference is hash set and linked hash set, they not maintain the order, right? But we said it's going to maintain the order. You can sort it. But like when you add, it's going to sort it for you. It's a sub-interface offset which guarantees that the elements in a set are sorted. 
Additionally, it provides the method first and last for returning the first and last element in set, and head set, and tail set. Like you can see, you can provide the elements, the head set, and the tail set from each element. Returning a portion of the set whose elements are less than two element and greater than or equals to form element. And we can use the lower E, floor E, ceiling E, and higher E. That return elements less respectively less than, less than or equal. So less than is lower, right? Floor is less than or equal than. And greater than or equal. And greater than. So floor and lower pretty much the difference is floor is less than. Floor is, I mean, lower is less than. Floor is less than or equal. Ceiling is greater than or equals, And higher is greater than. Operators. Pull first and pull last method remove and return the first and last element in the tree set. So pull is just like pop, right? You return and you remove. So let's look at, in order to make it to be in order, you are required to implement one interface, which is comparable, right? So we see that T set pretty much has to implement comparable. When you add, so this method has to run comparable and see if the elements that you try to add is lower. If it's lower, it's return negative, right? If it's positive, it's greater. If it's the same, it's equals, which is zero. And you see the same thing here. When we add, we get in order. Now when you do first, you get Beijing. When you do last, you get San Francisco. So let's look at some of the method here, like lower, lower P, Lower P that mean less than P. Less than P that mean every item that less than Paris. So it's gonna return this set, right? Or the next two Paris, New York. Yeah, it's gonna return New York. And the higher P should be Paris because P is just one character, right? Floor. New York. But if we have, so in this case, since the set is not duplicate, right? Then you most likely not going to get the same thing back. It's going to be a lower. Because floor is less than equal. This looks like lower and floor is going to be the same, right? Pull first, you return and you also remove. You see the list or the set just have London now. Just like pull last, no more San Francisco in the set. So that pretty much the three. The different is is sorted and also have first, right, last, lower, ceiling, higher, and then floor, pull first, pull last. Pretty much has more operation for navigating this set. Now let's look at another example. So this is a set again, and we create a geometric object, right? And this geometric object is form geometric object comparator class which probably is going to extend from geometric object or has the geometric object interface here right 
Now, we can see rectangle, circle, those are geometric objects. We started at them. Rectangle, four, five, circle, 40. And then we try to print the area out. So it looks like, like, like I said, we don't know how equals, right, in this case, or how this sort comparator is. By looking at this, it may use the area, right, to sort. So because it's ascending order from smallest area to the biggest area. So this object pretty much rectangle go first with four and another rectangle with 20. And the circle pretty much is a duplicate. So that's why we have only one object, right? And it's sorted by area. So that means the object itself, the geometric object has to implement compare to which is an interface comparable, has compared to, and use the area to consider for comparing. So this is just... So this question, you, you can go through it to prepare for your test, okay? So let's look at the performance. Set are more efficient than list four stalling and duplicate elements. Lists are useful for assessing elements through the index. So that's the difference. When do you use list, when do you use set, right? So when you worry about things should not be duplicate, then you should go with sets. If you allow duplicate, then you want to use index, so go with list. So this is just writing a program to test the performance. So we use a list, create an array list. This is a list. Add the items, zero to n, and we just make it 50,000. We call shuffle, shuffle the arrays. Now we create a set. New hash sets and this set created from that list. So we create a set. Get test tam. Get remove tam. So let's look at. We create another set, set two. This is linked hash set. And another set, set three, this is three set. And they all do the test time and remove test time. And we have the list to array list and link a list. They all test the performance by the same get test time and get remove time. And this is how we implement a get test time. Get the current time as a start time and start time subtract current time, which you're going to look at. It's just pretty much just when you want to search for something, you say contains, right, for each published list. And we use math.random to generate something that we want to find. Right, up to end time. And let's see how long it's gonna take. So we did that. Get remove time pretty much just the same. We removed the item. How long is it going to take? And let's see who's the best. So hash set to look at contain is take about 20 milliseconds. Linkage hash about 27. Tree set is about 47. So let's look back about contains a little bit. Why tree set takes very long.
So we look at, we want to see if it's contained, right? Test membership. So we look through the zero to the n, which is 50,000. So you try to find 50,000 of them. But when you multiply, the values change here, right? But if you look at the list, it's going to take way longer, huh? All the list, array list, linker list, linker list is the most. So we can see that array perform away, performance always better than linker list. Because the way that you have to do it, you pretty much use index, right? But linked list, you don't have index. You have to use pointers, right? So it takes longer. When you use array, it's always faster. So that's why if you know the size, array is better. Now, when you look at when you remove, and we see that set is way a lot better than list. All right, any questions so far about set and list comparison and their performance? So now we understand sets, so let's look at maps. So we have hash map, linked hash map, and tree map. So if you look back into Java collections, so these are sets, these are maps. Right, we have a map interface and we have sorted maps just like sorted set, which is tree is going to be sorted, right, tree map. We have hash map and linked hash map. And we have hash table. Okay. Now the difference between set is what and map is what? Set, you have the whole values, right? You store. But map, you have the key and value pairs. Like, for example, I have a search key. So that's a key, like ID. And then I get the values, which is John. Right, corresponding to the key. Yeah, like that. User ID is a key. So it enables fast retrieval, deletion, and updating of the pair through the key. So with the key, we believe that it makes it faster. It maps store the value along with the keys. The keys are like indexes, just like an array. The indexes are integers. The keys can be any objects. A map cannot contain duplicate keys. So it's not allowing duplicate keys. So for our uh, final product, so the better use maps, for example, for username and password, because we don't need to keep the chain okay, from, um, from our pair list, we can just use the key in the list. Yeah. That's true. Then we have to think about implementing the maps. Like now, we only show you from the collections how maps work. You understand list, you understand set, now you try to understand map, right?
So again, this is showing the UML diagram of the Java Collections map interface, right? Have the abstract classes, and the currently classes are the one who implement some abstract classes. Those are hash map, pre map, and linked hash map. Linked hash map just extends hash map. And these are the, you see that generics for map is going to be k and v because there are two types now key data type and it could be any data type right or oh, and it could be objects so that's why we separate them as k and v like i said before sometimes you see e for elements t for type now k for key v for value right for generates that's a common abbreviation that we use and map has clear contains key. So now you see the interface of the map is going to be a little bit different than the collection. We have to look at if it contains the key, right, and contains the values. Return true if this map maps one or more keys to the value. And then we have empty set. This return set. We turn a set consisting of the entries in this map. So pretty much just return a set version of the map. With the key value that you specify for the map set. Like you can do subset of that. Get yeah, get get provide a key and then you get a value, right? is in the key set key set return the set consisting of the keys in this map you can put you can put a new elements in right by using key and values like add put all you can put another map inside this map you can remove the key, provide the key, and it will remove and return the values, right? Values, return a collection consisting of the values in this map. The clear method also remove all the entries from the map. So put, remove, so let's look at hash map. Pretty much the same. These are the constructor. You can specify the capacity and load factor. Now we understand what's load factor. And you can also create a hash map from another map. Right. And tree map, tree map pretty much the same as the set, right? Tree set. They have operation like floor key, ceiling key, lower key, higher key, pull first entry, pull last entry, right? Head and trail map. So, pretty much the similar operations that we see in the set. So when we test, we create a hash map, put Smith, Anderson, Lewis. Now we have to put a key, right? Key and value. So the first one key is like name and the value is looks like maybe edges. So the difference now you see that instead of add an element, right? Like Beijing, London, now you can put the key and value into the map and this is using hash map this is a tree map so tree map should be sorted
As you can see, when we print out, the first one will not be sorted because uh, the tree and the tree will be sorted. Even the entry that you add are not sorted. And this is the linked hash map. So this tree map pretty much just create from another map, which is hash map, but it's going to be sorted. And uh, this is linked list, pretty much it's going to be similar to hash map. But it keeps the order that you enter. Like if you see hash map, you put Smith first, Anderson second, right? Lewis third, Cook fourth. The order is going to be any order. But for link at list, it's going to be in the same order, right? And that's the reason behind that was any order. When you learn hash technique, you see there have many techniques to make sure that when you hash the elements, it's going to be quick and fast, not like you have to do everything. So that's why the elements kind of depending on the hash technique that you use when you sit add in. They're going to have the probe. We will learn hash technique. They have linear probe, they have the bucket technique. They may have any technique when you hash, when you add in the elements. And the whole thing, the purpose is just make sure there's no collision. Like hashing is, you try to, just like RAM and hard disk, Hard disk is bigger than RAM, right? Hash table is just like RAM. When you try to accessing or adding the data, when the memory is full, how are you going to add more into RAM? You have to remove something out of the RAM. So that's a the technique. That's why when you add, it depends on the technique that you remove. You can use a technique that most recently used will not be removed. The one that's used less, they will be removed, something like that. So that's why it's not in order when you insert in. Okay, and there's, there's so many techniques. And the reason we have to use a smaller we call hash table like we I compare it to the RAM because if you try to search something from the RAM and you try to search something from hard disk which one is faster because site is smaller if you try to search something from like one terabyte of hard disk it's gonna be too long to get to find it right so that's why I use that technique to minimize the time to search Just like your Google search engine, they have so many technique. When you search something, it's customized to you. It's just like your hash function is you. And they have all the lists that you are relevant to. The one that you will never get to, it, it will not be in your hash function, in your hash table. Pretty much Google is learning you and then return something that's relevant to you back when you search. That makes sense because there's no way that you guys search one thing and get to relevant data from we have unlimited data out there in the world. How would you get that relevant into the first rank, right? That's why this is just figure as hash. All right, so this is just an application. So it said use hash, I mean use tree map to count operands upwards. So it will ask you to write a program to see 
the occurrence of the words, like word counts, or occurrence of the words, actually, the frequency count, right? In the document, how would you do that? You probably can say, okay, I'm gonna read the file and use string, or if you scan it, you do dot next, you read in by word, right? And then you pretty much just going to create an array. And when you, you pretty much just go look into your array again, if this was already existing, an array could be an array of object, and this object is a word class that has a count and as to be able to increase in the count. Correct? That could be one way, right? But it could take very long time too, right? Because when your word is multiplying, your list is your array is gonna be bigger, right? And you have to add to it to the array, which takes we just see the performance testing is gonna take very long time to find it, right? So let's see. It said we can use tree map to do this. So we can have a string and integer. Integer pretty much the count, right? And a string is the word, right? So this is just a word. So it's split the word. And this is the uh, regex again. We learned about regex, right? So it's going to split by either new line, either tab, either return, right? Or any of these symbols. Make sense? It's going to split by that. Let's see. All right, so it's going to iterate to the word's length. With key equals to words and array of two level case. So after you split, you get all the words. You put all the words into array, right? So the split pretty much just turn the whole statement into array. Now, since we said the first one the word itself is a key, so that's why we just put a key in. If it's not contains already, if that key is not in there already, and as long as the length is greater than zero. Because we're not going to put none word in the word list, so we compare the rank. And then we start to put the values to one when it's first time adding. Else we just increment it and update the value. Right, if we file it, we get the key. We pass the key, we get the values, update the values, and put it back. And then we pretty much have everything in a hash map, right? Or tree map. And if you want to display, it's just called into set. It pretty much just put into the set. And then we can print the set out with word count. Okay, so it looks like very simple with a tree map. Singleton, an unmodifiable collection of maps. Right, singleton, like I just mentioned earlier, you can create singleton sets, lists, and maps using the static method in a collection class. So the collection class contains a static method for list and collection. It also contains a method for creating immutable singleton set. What's immutable? That's mutable and immutable, right? What's mutable? They change. 
Immutable is not change. You heard about immutable method and immutable method, right? So, Im immutable that you cannot change, meaning you don't want to have setters for those. Then you cannot change, right? Multiple, that means you can change, then you have setters, right? So the class that is immutable, that means you don't want to have setters. You just do getters, right? The culture class defines three constants, empty set, empty list, and empty map. For an empty set, empty list, and empty map, right? This collection are immutable. So you can change, right? It also provides a singleton method creating an immutable set containing only a single item. You can have a singleton object, you can have a singleton list, you can have a singleton map. And you can make it unmodifiable too when you create it collection, list, map, set, sorted map, and sort set. So if you create an immutable list, it's going to contain only a single item and a singleton map method of creating an immutable map containing only a single, single entry. And these are statics methods. Okay. So what's wrong in the following code? So this single then is gonna return right set. So we have set string set. And we create an object. It is a singleton, that means it's only contain a single item, right? So let's try. So I'm going to create a singleton set. So there's problem here because you cannot add, right? Because it's singleton, right? It will contain only one item. So that's why you got a exception error and supported operation, which is we try to add to the singleton. Okay. So that's the errors, right? So what happened when you run the following code? So this is unmodifiable. You should not be able to use a remove operation, right? Let's try that. 
So this is a list. We try to remove the list. So we could a list Chicago, Boston. We try to remove Dallas. Then the same thing. Since I'm modifiable, then you're not supposed to use the remove operation. So that's pretty much a singleton and unmodifiable. So example of unmodifiable list, like if you want to make sure that once you create it, you cannot remove or change or update the list, right? Could be the, I think it should be the transaction logs right like all the transaction use the log in use activities you don't want people to update that that type of application once the ticket is created you don't want people to adjust or update the amount right or the credit card processing transactions things like that it's very beneficial right and what's the benefit of using singleton? When is the time you use singleton? Hmm? No, well, like when is the time? Yeah, I mean, or set or list or. I mean, singleton using all the time in, in the application. Like singleton. Is a design pattern. Restrict the instantiation of a class and ensure that only one instance of the class exists in the Java. Like Singer than example. When to use singer than. I try to see a good example. Locking class. A singleton can be used instead of a single instance of a class because a locking class usually needs to be used over and over again. If every class uses this locking class, dependency injection becomes cumbersome. It doesn't affect the execution of your code. Disable locking code. You guys know locking, right? Like, normally when you write a program, you test your program by system.out, right? To print. So that's pretty much the lock. Okay, the log of your applications. Because in the application that we use, we cannot do system that out, right? <laughs> like when you have, like Microsoft says, send the error report. That's the locking. It's create a locking file, and then it's going to send that file to Microsoft. Because they cannot see your system that out. Make sense? So that's why they have to write those information to the file. It's just a locking file, right? And then all the because in order to fix the errors, you have to know what created errors, right? 
So that's why in the locking, it's going to tell you the situation when it's creating errors, what you have done. So they have locking. And this say, uh, singleton should be used in that case. Like, to have only one valid lock. Something that control concurrent access to a shared resource. Yes, that should be singleton. It's very important because if you have two data structures, two lists, and you try to validate user authentication, and you allow them to create two lists to store information, then which list you're going to authenticate to? The list should be just singleton list, right? So that's why what you create should be a singleton list. Make sense? Because this resource is shared. All right, so that should be something yeah, this one also said, example, a printer spooler is unlikely to be called for more than one place. You can use a printer spooler as a singleton object. And locking, same thing again. It should be just one lock. And the configuration too. The configuration should be just singleton. You don't want to have multiple configurations. When you start the application, you may have config file. Config could be just like the color of the UI, the title, right? Things like that. That could be simple config. And more complicated should be like username, password to the interface of the database, something like that. Because when you launch the program, user authentication has to be able to access the list, and the list should be protected by a username and password. And the username and password could be in your configuration file. Right? In order to read that file, you have to be able to get authenticate. And those are configurations. And that should be a singleton too. All right. I mean, these are the common question that you will see if you go to job interview too. They will ask like when to use singleton, what is singleton, and they have the concept of dependency injection. That is another question that very common in the job interview too. It's just a software engineering concept. So a technique where one object supplies the dependency of another object. So a dependency is an object that can be used like a service classes. An injection is the passing of a dependency to a dependent object that uses it. So we create class A and we have service for class A. Right? So this is dependency class A is depending on the service on class A. And class A has to use this service from class A. So the builder is the one who created class A and the builder is also the one who has to inject dependency to the class A in order to for class A to use. It's just it's just a design pattern. Like now you, you understand the concept of instantiation creating objects. But when you apply to use it's gonna be different. And this one used a lot in web application.
you see if you start to write a code you see yeah let's look at this one it may be very helpful what, what is, is dependency, dependency injection, injection? Well, the literal meaning is to inject dependencies. So let's start by defining what a dependency is. A dependency is just another object that your class needs to function. So if you have a model class that fetches data from a database object, we can say that your model class has a dependency of that database object. So now that we know what a dependency is, Let's talk about what it means to inject dependencies. Injecting dependencies just means that the dependency is pushed into the class from the outside. All that means is that you shouldn't instantiate dependencies using the new operator from inside of the class. Instead, take it as a constructor parameter or via a setter. That's really all there is to dependency injection. You don't need a fancy container or a class or an object to do it. Sure, they may make your life easier, but you don't need them. But why should we inject dependencies in the first place? Let's imagine for a minute that you're programming a house building robot. You start with a pile of lumber and you program it to start building walls. Then, when you get to a doorway, what do you do? Do you program it to build a custom door out of raw materials each time? Or do you program it to take a ready-made door from a supplier and install that? The most flexible way to do it would be to take the door from a supplier. And that's exactly what dependency injection does. It decouples your class's construction from the construction of its dependencies. The reason that this is so important is the dependency inversion principle. Basically, dependency inversion is the principle that code should depend upon abstractions. By depending upon abstractions, we're decoupling our implementations from each other. In PHP, that means your code should depend upon interfaces. That way, we can substitute different dependencies as long as they all satisfy the required interface. By using dependency injection, we decouple our code from the lower level implementations, making our code cleaner, easier to modify, and easier to reuse. Now that we've adopted dependency injection, we have another problem. Each of our classes require all of these dependencies. So now, to construct each and every class, we not only need to figure out what dependencies they need, we need to figure out how to instantiate the dependencies. Luckily for us, there's a solution. Enter the dependency injection container. At the root, the container is nothing more than a map of dependencies that your class needs with the logic to create those dependencies if they haven't been created yet. So every time you ask for a dependency, the map will figure out which dependency to use, and then the container will check to see if it created one of those dependencies already. If it has, it'll just use that one. Otherwise, it'll create the dependency, store it, and then return it. So instead of constructing all of your classes yourself, you ask the container for a new instance. It will then resolve the dependencies, construct your object, and return it to you. The best part of it is that the container can resolve complex dependencies transparently. And if you want to swap out a generic dependency, you only need to update the container. So write cleaner and more modular code. Use dependency injection. OK, so we're going to practice on that later. But now you see that in Java, they design an interfaces. 
It's pretty much just applying the concept of dependency injection. It's just mark, make your code clean and right, organize your code that way. All right, so I think we at the end of this chapter, right? 21. Um, you probably has to look at the questions and probably do programming. And I think we should have enough questions. Is that correct? Yes. For this chapter. It's only 15, though. Right? So 15, then you probably has to pick from the required textbook. And this is a set and map right what chapter for that i think they have 21st. huh 21st. no for another textbook uh, sorry. Uh, I have all right let me yeah you you can use the other questions as long as it's related but let me look up uh, I thought I have the image of textbook here here textbook here right from Joyce Neil Dale Should be 12 right? 12.2? Okay. So it's just pick the question from 12.2, okay? For this one. All right, so let's look at it real quick. I think this one is the auto. Yeah, that's a hashing technique, so it's not a map. I think it had to be from the new textbook. This one will not have it. <laughs> huh? No, this is hash. Hash is just a technique how to hash. Which is different. We we'll talk about hash later. You, you're not gonna see it on this one. This one doesn't have. Yeah, they don't have that. They don't have set the maps in here. Let me see. You said 12.2, right? 12.2 is a new textbook, right? The new one, they have it, right? Right. You have to get a new textbook. That's why. That's why I tried to say get a new edition. Right. If you don't have one, you can talk to me. I have the chap the book you can take the pictures of okay to do the assignments all right thanks